for bringing me here I study to, uh, which uh, challenge they also not do it. I, I think uh, this is quite a uh, standard um, and sometimes we need to, to challenge it. Um, uh, from your um, uh, research uh, we can we can see that you are using the hexagon, uh, another kind of, of tweet. I think the discussion behind this is that uh, some kind of analysis uh, could mediate results, um, and you didn't say it, but uh, we know that um, uh, hexagonal width is more stable in direction than um, an, um, orthogonal width, so, so this is an important issue to, uh, to mention. Uh, I, I use uh, this kind of, um, of external hexagonal width to analyze um, irregular um, uh, Elaborate parts in urbanism that makes sense in that uh, in that um, uh, in that examples. Uh, uh, but um, uh, here, um, what um, I think what we are doing is just using the Excel, uh, hexagonal grid, just uh, having it as a formalism. Uh, we can analyze the the. The spaces, for instance, in a posing a rectangle, and it could be also a, a possible analysis. But uh, what is, um, I think, behind this is uh, this that the hexagonal could be more um, stable than the that the orthogonal width. Um, uh, many of the of the available softwares or the main use softwares are based on on the orthogonal grid, and that could mediate analysis. Um, uh, most of all, if we don't uh, uh, previously um, uh, analyze the main directions, and there are spaces which are not main directions, or are not uh, main orthogonal directions, so this is a, a very important point of view. Um, uh, I think what you are trying to do is really a polar analysis from the world. I, I, I think that what you are trying to do, uh, on which will be more precise, will be to make some buffers or some offsets. That depends if you are naming it in CAD or in GIS. Uh, so if this kind of analysis uh, will give you more precision, um, and this is uh, um, easier to, to do it. I think that you are spending a lot of time doing this kind of analysis, and um, this is very Easy to, to be optimized, optimized. And, and the the issue that you are bringing here is quite relevant because uh, we know that the uh, first uh, 20 centimeters or half a meter is just to to gain dust. This is not in in big space uh, in, in exposition that serves to, to nothing. And there are other um, open spaces that make more sense or uh, in which we can create or more activities have uh, come um, developed there, but you are not measuring them. So uh, I think if you uh, yeah make this kind of, of analysis from the walls uh, and, after, and after that you measure the, the rest of the space, um, we can see that in spaces that are uh, quite big, big groups could have some activities and other spaces are just two small groups. Uh, in fact, uh, in, in the other symposium, I, I had a, um, a paper uh, dealing with the, with the the spaces that you can locate in, in a perimeter uh, with a certain uh, a certain um, uh, uh, with a certain dimension. We can uh, talk later and uh, give you an algorithm. It's not a, a big deal. Uh, I think with this you can you can gain more value. But I think this is need. Um, I open the question to, to everybody. We need to uh, to get out of the uh, orthogonal um, analysis that sometimes could mediate results. Uh, and we need to, I think that uh, is the most convenient way for uh, software or for computers 
but we need to, to know how um, when this can mediate results. Um, uh, and we, we can see how results are different if the grid is um, is rotated. Um, and I think this this kind of of, of, uh, of contributions make many sense in this kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much. For the comments, I really just haven't thought about the um, offset. And you, you are right, maybe it's uh, simple and I am complicated myself. Uh, uh, I'm more precise, I'm more accurate. Yeah, 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 I, I trust you. Um, but I think uh, in the way that I'm approaching this, uh, well, I have yeah, a couple of reasons to use the hexagonal grid. So I, I must say I came to it naturally, and then it has been more uh, of an issue of, of not giving it up. So easily, so I was told like, yeah, orthogonal is easier. So, so why do you complicate the work yourself? But then with this oblique grid, I found it. Uh, I found I could work with it with also two measures. So this is what happens. That's it. That's the easy part of the orthogonal grid. So, so if that limitation didn't exist with it, like I didn't get it up because it has some other properties, like uh, since the distance is stable. Uh, you can maybe associate some metric values to the topology values. And well, what you say about the offset, I think that may be like an interesting kind to check. Um, here I'm trying to, to assign the property uh, not to the walls themselves, but to, to the space that is close to the wall. So, so in some way, this is telling me if the portion of the space can be considered an offset of the wall or, or some other obstacle. Maybe it's not a wall, maybe it's a column, uh, but then um, the property belongs to the floor, let's say, and not to the vertical element. <laughs> so that's by the line of Thank you very much. question. Ah, okay, I was my um, I would like to make uh, some comments for the last presentation. Uh, first of all, congratulations for your very big technical precision. And I mean, it's not easy to do things with grasshopper and kangaroo because I'm also working in this field. And you had a very long definition, which means you mastered the digital skills. This is a very positive thing, and I want to start with a compliment. But after the compliment comes some, you know, not so compliment. Uh, I think sometimes when you get so much into the technology, you get stuck by it, and you kind of lose the bigger picture. And I think you can, because you got really proficient in what you did, technically speaking, I think you fell a little bit in that trap. Because um, you got into too much detail, like okay, the interval, the translation component, the z represent the angle, the formulas, the, the, but we lo we lost the why, the why question, why what whether data to make a translation, you know, you can make translation without whether data, and they stand and. Uh, why not making a small translation by yourself instead of a render with people doing uh, flip flops and things on it, which is impossible? I mean, they have to be circles. And don't make it translation with spaghetti on your desk in a one to ten scale, because this will help you learn about the material and the force. The translation is really magical because the things don't touch and they have the strings. And so I think that uh, you have a very good potential as a duo. You see that you can collaborate very well together and do difficult things, but uh, you have to really pose to yourself the question: Why do I take weather data or music to make a bridge, or you know, a painting to make a building? I mean, you can do it. You can do whatever you like, of course. But um, maybe add a little bit of uh, zoom out. To see better your work and then zoom in again, and it's a constant uh, play of zooming zoom out. Please. Yeah. Want to reply? Yeah. <laughs> it's with, it's with much love. <laughs> Always with love. Yes, it's true because we are so fo focused 
and maybe it's zoom out. It's, Sometimes it's zoom yes, out. Yes, yes. And uh, you ask the basic question because we see your project for the first time. No, so we do say why? What did the water uh, the weather data do to this consecutively? If it's windy, it goes like this, and if it's sunny, it goes like this. It's not really clear. And uh, the organization is only structural. Yes. So why no wind I understand, but uh, uh, rain I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> They is together with the aquifers on top. Maybe you want to make it out of chocolate. Maybe you want to make it out of chocolate. But one thing is for sure that if you master the and crack out so well already, you will go very far. I understand the What? I understand the thing. You understand the thing? Yes, I understand perfectly. I don't understand why so much well, so only to because you go uh, like that to simulate an umbrella. The way, uh, <laughs> more more sense, more uh, data from yeah. weather important, uh, not only the the, the wind but uh, also the rain and the sun. You know, and, uh, but if you want only want uh, uh, structural optimization, you need much less data. <laughs> the, 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 well, what was the, the, the base uh, structural model, model you wanted to do? Nothing against it. No, no, no. So I'll go a bit back to the Hanticon, but because you told me already that it's a, it's a master project, and it's not like a, some sort of piece that you will spend like years to develop. It. I'll give you two direct two things to just think about. I'm not gonna. Well, I'll be. I'll be. What is that? Uh, one is. Before you conclude that you want a honeycomb or any other say, you take the say, but you sample, let's say, a thousand random, so ten, ten, ten random buildings from all over the world, okay, or maybe more, because there are different architectures. And then you try to understand which say can fill the, the, can fill the space better, okay, and why we might be using orthogonal and not uh, some other uh, uh, say. Okay, because that shape has a different use in, uh, in computational, uh, probably computational design and engineering due to the honeycomb and the strength and other things that I'm not an expert. Okay, but other shapes like the pure rectangle or some sort of form like this, I think it's a bit better. But it's better if you end up knowing that because it's from a thousand buildings, how many can I feel in whatever size, uh, even if you go, of course, the smaller you go, with equal size, right, or equal area. So you do a sampling exercise, and you see which shape is the one that describes the outline of any shape that you find in a building better, in terms of coverage, okay, so that's an exercise. But uh, then the other one is, uh, you might want to read about the isodist drift, which is a measure. Google it, isodist drift, and try to understand whether, I'm not going to say that there are other things that might be better than what you said, but this is something that you might want to read about a bit more. Because you talked about the, you want to apply things in the way, not on the wall, but near the wall, and the like. And there are also other measures in uh, describing the perimeter, which is not exactly on the wall, but, but I should say it maybe. But if you, if you take it on as a, I'm not sure, I even discussed that uh, in the past days. But if you are trying to take something like this further in a PhD, for example, I don't know if you're going to do that. I think you need to, to rethink a couple of things, to be honest, okay? Yeah, it is good and great to actually change the shape of joint series segments, how it works, so I think that's fantastic. Yeah, well done for that. I think I have seen, but I'm not 100% sure, and uh, if I asked Turner, but he evaluated the hexagonal shape because he considered it, and somehow he concluded, and again, I don't remember why, that's not the optimum shape. 
and he followed their square shape. You might want to really Google that and explore that a little bit further. And regarding Nana Christina work, um, it's really interesting to um, engage with the African colonies. I think that's uh, there's a lot of potential in that because, as you said, there isn't enough space index work as a, has understood African cities using space index. What I would suggest is try to put greater emphasis in the research questions and less in how you solve the problems to start with. Because if you start with a question in order to establish some good solid knowledge that can help you uh, in design and in decision making and in um, ways in which you can improve that particular area. Uh, coming from a model practice, we're always here to solve problems. That's the mood we use. But once you move into a PhD mode, in, a switch is needed that starts with the question so that you don't try to do too much or everything. Okay. And you can focus on a, a, a clear research question that defines a doable task that can give you the knowledge to address some of these problems because you cannot address them all in yeah. PhD. Thank you. Well, I believe we have to close now sure. because it's five past twenty Friday twenty seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe that can be In order to come to